so yes dear students the paper was tricky actually the paper is little bit tricky from ent side not easy at the same time not difficult it's little bit tricky so we'll go with uh, one by one six questions were there from ent and uh, incorrect in juvenile angiofibroma you all know that this is a vascular tumor so you should not go for biopsy right never poke an angry man right okay so don't do biopsy in case of vascular tumors like angiofibroma right and your what is also vascular glomus tumors like that right cochlear implant will not be done it otosclerosis is a middle ear condition why do you want to go for a cochlear implant when inner ear is normal no congenital hearing loss most of the times cochlea will be having problems and if it is profound definitely you will have a you will plan for a cochlear implantation and uh, fixed malleus is again a middle ear condition and you don't want to go for any cochlear implant there because it's not related to inner ear at all and ototoxicity induced hearing loss either your striavascularis can get damaged by diuretics or your chemotherapeutic drugs can damage your outer hair cells so cochlea can get damaged so there you can go for cochlear implant so if the question is cochlear implant will be done then the answer is b and d if the cochlear implant will not be done in was the question then the answer is otosclerosis and fixed malleus right so your otosclerosis is here fixed malleus is here and the congenital hearing loss and ototoxicity are here so these are repairable by regular middle ear surgeries right right and these inner ear conditions are there you need cochlear implant right okay yeah okay if will be done then it should be behind strider in a newborn is seen in laryngo malaysia most common congenital anomaly that is uh, of larynx is laryngo malaysia you will be having inspiratory strider that is the only complaint with which the child will be presenting right and subglottic stenosis even more strider will be there in subglottic stenosis right in papilloma is most commonly seen in around three to five year old hemorrhagic polyp on the vocal cord will just cause hoarseness of the voice so in both these conditions you will see this and moreover in a newborn you can't see this hemorrhagic polyps on the vocal cords right okay <clears throat> Pyriform fossa injured due to fish bone, which nerve is damaged? See, pyriform fossa is lying a little bit high up, isn't it? See, if you take your, this one, your uh, larynx, huh? so just uh, if you can remember our diagram during your routine larynx classes, okay? Here is your, this is your vocal cord, arytenoid, okay, cuneiform, uh, <coughs> corniculate cuneiform. So if I draw a line at the level of the vocal cord, Behind the arytenoid is your pyriform fossa. Behind the cricoid is your post cricoid area. And this is your posterior pharyngeal wall, isn't it? Above the level of the vocal cords is supplied by internal laryngeal nerve. Below the level of vocal cords is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. So if you take the pyriform fossa, this is supplied by internal laryngeal nerve. If you take the post cricoid area, this is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. If you take the post pharyngeal wall, upper part is supplied by internal. Lower part is supplied by recurrent, isn't it? So... <clears throat> Internal laryngeal will be the answer here, right? Okay. Patient experiencing vertigo and the vomiting. Here, this is the catch point. If it has been given on positional change while turning in bed on positional change, if only vertigo was there, then the answer should have been VPPV. But vomiting is also there. The answer goes towards the vestibular neuritis. Even sometimes vestibulospinal tract involvement may be there. Gait abnormalities also you can see sometimes. You give some steroids, it will be clearing very immediately. So don't jump into the answers. Read the question carefully. I told you BPPV only vertigo. Only vertigo in BPPV. That was the point we have discussed. Right? Okay. So in mean years, you know, mean years involves entire inner ear. Not just vertigo. Apart from your vertigo, you will be having SNHL. Same is the case with labyrinthitis. Here also labyrinth. The labyrinth means inner ear. Labyrinthitis, inflammation of the entire inner ear. So here also you will be having vertigo plus hearing. But vestibular neuritis, only vestibular nerve is involved. So you will be having only vertigo. BPPV also you will be involving here also. There will be only the otoconia will be dislodging into the canal. This will be disrupting only the cupula and crista there. So only vertigo. But vestibular nerve is involved it is connected to medullary vomiting center also so there you will be having vomiting also even if still extends down into vestibular spinal tract you may even have gait abnormalities also okay 
after ear infection yes this has a lot of students had discussion with this question after ear infection child had limb spasm so a clue was given after ear infection yes tetanus the main confusion was between tetanus and meningitis right in sigmoid sinus thrombosis no limb spasm at all and in bejol spasm no limb spasm at all right the the confusion is between these two options right so if your ear infection is no way related to tinnitus so here you are left over with only meningitis and someone asked me a uh, difficulty opening mouth how is this explained uh, neck rigidity due to neck rigidity indirect the mouth the opening difficulty is not direct uh, but due to neck rigidity some difficulty opening mouth will be there so the answer is meningitis here okay Right. So this ends the ENT discussion. A little bit tricky paper, not so easy. At the same time, not so difficult. Those are, who were alert and studied line by line definitely have, might have answered well.